You may already know a lot about the woman in our next story. She was a single mother on welfare who went on to become half of the Grammy award-winning duo, The Judds. She took pride in being a role model, a success story for every woman. But what you might not know is that she has an affliction from which millions of women and men suffer. And as Cynthia McFadden found out, she's not afraid to talk about it. really right there on the top of the world. Mm -hmm. Six Grammys, 15 million albums. Yeah, it was the adventure of a lifetime, that's for sure. Give a little love. Naomi and Winona Judd, a mother-daughter sensation with a rags-to-riches story. You know, I was Cinderella, gone to the ball, and I, I wanted to be that fantasy for that secretary and that waitress and that clerk and that nurse, which I had all been. I wanted to say to them, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Don't you think it's time? But the fairy tale didn't last. There were nights when Naomi could barely stand up on stage. In 1990, she announced she was quitting. It was hepatitis. Correct. Hepatitis C, which is the one you don't want to have. I chose to accept my diagnosis that I had liver disease, but I denied the prognosis. I didn't buy what these guys were telling me. And what did they tell you? They said that um, I might just have a couple of years to live. Her doctors told her to stop performing. Naomi Judd decided to say farewell her way. Goodbye, America. She and Winona embarked on a sold out 50 state final tour. She now says it was having to say goodbye that helped trigger yet another illness. You've agreed to sit down and talk about a subject that to many people is still shameful, to many people is embarrassing. Many people don't even want to say the words mental illness. Mm -hmm. What mental illness did you have? Panic attacks. Naomi Judd is not alone. According to the American Psychiatric Association, 13 million Americans suffer from panic disorders or phobias. A panic attack is not just a case of nerves, but a very real and frightening physical experience. This is not just stage fright. This oh, is not no. just a case of butterflies in your stomach. No, this is, this is not just having the jitters because you're going in for that big job interview or you got a, a blind date you've built yourself up for. Uh-uh. No, this is the real McCoy. Tell me about the first one. I can, I can tell you exactly what happened to me. I was back in my room on the bus to dream. Asleep on her tour bus, headed for a concert in Indianapolis. She had just learned about the hepatitis and had decided to retire. I suddenly woke up standing on the bed as we were moving down the road with my heart racing, my chest felt tight, I felt short of breath, and my legs were shaking uncontrollably. I thought I was having a, a heart attack. I didn't know what was going on. It was just, it was like I was in mortal danger. Judd was sweating, dizzy, and struggling to breathe. And I rushed over to my little window, uh, tore open the curtains, and it was completely frosted over. And I ripped off my pajama top and pushed my chest into the, the frost to sort of shock my body back into normalcy. That didn't work. And of course, the next day, I, I just sort of cackled at the thought of a passing trucker <laughs> seeing Mama Judd in this pose, but uh, there was nothing funny about it at the moment. How long did it last? 15 or 20 minutes. And what happened, Cynthia, is you're so freaked at, at losing control and feeling like you're losing your marbles that you become obsessed with the fear that it's going to happen again. And it did. A series of frightening panic attacks at her home in rural Tennessee. Here, girl. Do you know why? Yes, of course. <laughs> you do now. I guess you did I've then. become a detective, and I've uh, unraveled all of this mystery. In my situation, uh, I just happened to have 
unfortunately, all the precipitating factors that you can have to have a panic attack. I had all of them. Not only had Judd just been told she had a life-threatening disease, she was devastated at giving up performing and the fans who had brought her so much joy. I think I was in shock for a few months. But it's a bit like after a funeral, you know, the out-of-town guests go home to their normal routines, the flowers die, and I'd pasted all the photos in the scrapbook, read all the fan mail, and then, okay, I'm here, and the world has stopped. And that's when they set in. Worst of all, she was home alone, while her husband and the two famous daughters she is so close to were working. I went literally for days without seeing another human face. Because Winona was out on the bus starting her solo gig, Ashley had moved to Hollywood to become an actress. Larry, my husband, was managing a, a group out on the road. And here's the queen of everything, you know, who was used to twisting and twirling on stage every night, uh, calling all the shots, you know, being a boss lady and, you know, having complete creative control and freedom out there. Alone. So what would you do when you had them? Well, I was very lucky, very blessed that I found a fabulous therapist. We would found a Christian therapist that our family was going to, to get me through the, to get them, I was actually doing better than them, to get them through the, um, um, I was convincing them that I was going to live and be okay. How good was your family in dealing with your panic attacks? It sounds to me like your panic attacks panicked them. Yep. <laughs> Because as the, as the reigning queen of Serene, um, they'd never seen me out of control. How did they react? I, it completely scattered their acorns. It was not only that they were dealt this blow of the fact that they could lose me to my illness, but then to see, you know, Wynonna and I actually were absolutely freaked. They were just, so really when we were in therapy as a family, it benefited them every bit as much as it did me. Judd also learned that there were physiological reasons for the attacks, and for a while she was prescribed medication, the drug Zoloft. There is a, a neurochemical called serotonin that is responsible for our sense of peace, our sense of contentedness and well-being. If it's in, in imbalance, if the body doesn't make enough of it or whatever, that's when you can go into a panic attack or depression. And that's basically what these drugs do. Simply put, they allow the serotonin to stay in your bloodstream longer. So it's a little chemical readjustment. Right. Naomi Judd believes she has conquered her panic attacks. And she says, although the hepatitis virus still lurks in her body, her health is good. She's even back on the road, not singing this time, but giving inspirational speeches, standing room only crowds, and advising those who ask for her help. My girlfriend, Carly Simon, who has legendary stage fright, called me last summer um, from the road. And God love her, she was in a full-blown panic attack. I said, okay, I want you to take off your shoes. I want you to spread your toes and really be where you are. Really feel the floor. I want you to wrap your hands around the microphone. I want you to pick out somebody in the front row. Because remember, these folks are there because they like you. And I just really, at one point, got kind of tough on her. And I said, okay, why the heck do you write these songs? You know? Simon went on stage. She did beautifully. And I was so thrilled because I knew that if Carly couldn't go back and, and do, fulfill those first couple of shows, there was a very real possibility, and we discussed this, that she might hang it up for good. What is it that you should say to a loved one who is going through this? Realize that um, no one's ever died from a panic attack and that it passes. This too shall pass is one of the most important, powerful little lines in the Bible. And I would say that to myself. And this too shall pass. And by golly, it did. For more information on panic attacks, contact the Anxiety Disorders Association of America in Rockville, Maryland. By the way, Naomi Judd says not a day goes by that she doesn't think about singing, but right now has no plans to return to the concert stage. For the time being, she says, she's content to sing to her grandson.